In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the derivative by the delta method. This is question six. The question reads, find the derivative of f of x is equal to the cube root of x using the delta method. Notice that I've given this question a difficulty rating of challenging, which suggests that it's not as straightforward as the previous questions we've done in this series. That being said, let's go ahead and set this up. Our function is the cube root of x. So what I will do is using the definition of the derivative, I'll take the limit as x approaches zero. And notice that this part of the expression, we will substitute x plus delta x where we see the x. So we have the cube root of x plus delta x minus the function itself, the cube root of x, all over delta x. Now if you look closely at what's been given, we've been given the definition of a derivative, and also we've been given the difference of two cubes. Obviously, if you're doing this for the first time, you might not know that you have to use this relationship, where the cube root of a minus the cube root of b is equal to the following expression. Unfortunately, I found no other way around it, so you need to know this. Because what I'll do next is set this part of the expression equal to a, and set this part equal to b. So technically what we have is a minus b over delta x. And if you look closely at this relationship, this equation, we can rearrange the factors here. Take for example, this factor is being multiplied to this whole expression in brackets. If I divide both sides by this part of the expression, I'll end up with this. I'll have a cubed minus b cubed over a squared plus ab plus b squared is equal to a minus b. Let me rewrite what a is and what b is clearly. a is equal to the cube root of x plus delta x, and b was assigned as the cube root of x. So I'll take this expression and substitute it wherever I see a in this equation. So I see it here, here, and here, and I'll substitute what I've set b as, this, into wherever I see the b's. Let's go ahead and do that. So I have the cube root of x plus delta x, and that's being raised to the power of three, this part, minus the cube root of x, which is also being raised to the power of three. And at the bottom, the denominator, we have x plus delta x, and that's the cube root of that expression raised to the power of two, plus the cube root of x plus delta x times b, which is the cube root of x, plus b squared, and we know what b is, it's the cube root of x raised to the power of two. All of this, will get substituted into the numerator of our limit. So let's go ahead and do that. We have the limit as x approaches zero all over delta x. Right now this looks like a mess, and it is. But we can simplify this a lot. Take for example this expression. We have the cube root of x plus delta x raised to the power of three. Remember what cube root is. So let's say we have the cube root of some random letter, let's call it c. This is the same thing as saying c to the power of a third. So we have c to the power of a third raised to a power of three, for example. And according to the exponent rules, you multiply the exponents and you end up with c to the power of one. So technically, in our case, we're ending up with x plus delta x, the cube root and the cube cancel each other out. So we have x plus delta x, and the same logic applies here. We end up with only x. The cube root and the cube go away, minus x. Let's see what we can do to simplify this part. If you look at it closely, you can't really do much, except this fraction is over delta x. So this delta x will come right here. And I'll explain the logic in a moment. 
So we have the numerator over all of this, which I'm hovering over, times delta x. So I'll rewrite this whole expression in brackets times delta x. And this is being multiplied to delta x. Now, let's understand this. Why did this delta x go underneath? Well, just pretend that you had a fraction, a over b, all over d. This is like saying a over b divided by d. And as we know, with fractions, you will flip d over 1. The d goes at the bottom, and it gets multiplied to the denominator. And that's exactly what happened here. Anyway, let's continue. Let's write down the limit. Don't forget that. Limit as x approaches 0. Notice that we can cancel out this x and this x. x minus x is 0. And delta x and delta x will cancel each other out. So we'll have 1, and this becomes a 1 as well. If we take the limit now, this delta x becomes 0, because we're taking the limit as x approaches 0. This becomes 0, and we're left with, and we don't need to write down limit anymore because we've taken the limit, 1 over the cube root of x raised to the power of 2 plus the cube root of x times the cube root of x plus the cube root of x raised to the power of 2. Let's see how we can simplify this further. Well, over here, we have x cube rooted times x cube rooted. That's the exact same thing as saying x to the power of 1 over 3 times x to the power of 1 over 3. And we know what happens when you multiply two of the same bases. You add the exponents. A third plus a third is 2 over 3. So this expression becomes x to the power of 2 over 3. We have 1 over x to the power of 2 over 3. This is x to the power of also 2 over 3. And if you're confused as to why, remember this means x to the power of a third raised to the power of 2. We're multiplying this third with the 2, gives us 2 over 3. And the same thing here. We have three terms that are identical. We can rewrite this as 1 over 3 x to the power of 2 over 3. And if you want this as a radical, you write this down as 1 over 3 times the cube root of x to the power of, and you can place that 2 over here or on the outside. This expression is the derivative of what we started with. Now, just before I conclude, some textbooks might want you to rationalize your final answer. And what that means is do not include a radical in the denominator. In case your textbook or your teacher wants that, what you will do at this stage is multiply the top and the bottom by what will cancel out the radical that's at the bottom right now. In other words, I'll multiply this by the cube root of x, the top and the bottom, and look what happens. We end up with the cube root of x at the top, and at the bottom, this factor and this factor will cancel each other out, leaving you with 3 times the radicand. So if the back of your textbook does not give you this, it most likely gives you that. And there you have it. That is how to find the derivative by the delta method.